Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Unconventional Attorney Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and I am the Unconventional Attorney. What's up everybody? Today, we're going to talk about five lessons that I learned from my latest mastermind meeting. Before we get to that though, as always, if you are not subscribed to my newsletter, you're missing out and you're an idiot, okay? Seriously. It's free. It comes out every Sunday, and it's really good. I spend a lot of time on it. I I pretty much never email you other than that. And if you don't get it, you're missing out. I share with you um, things that I don't share anywhere else, um, and it's good, like I said. Try it. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. But if you're not subscribed, if you're not even trying it, free resource, what are you doing? Um, Go to the unconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter to check that out. The unconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter. Okay, so let's just dive right in and talk and have some real talk because this mastermind meeting was was pretty interesting. It was really something that I have never precisely experienced before in a good way. And so I kind of wanted to talk about it and it gave me a lot of ideas for my own uh, mastermind meeting that's coming up. I'm changing the name, by the way. This is this is all basically as a result of this weekend and me thinking about things. But I'm changing the name of the inner circle, which is the sort of the group of attorneys that I have that that you know I, I teach and and share things that are working with me with and um, sort of share the systems that I put together and the processes and and the marketing systems that I have. I'm changing the name from the inner circle to the sanctuary. And I'm doing that because the inner circle for me has never felt right. I've called it a couple of other things, the back room, things like that. Um, but those names never really stuck as well. And the one of the things that I hate about the inner circle is that it, it's like, it kind of implies that everybody is coming in just to, just to um, that I am the focal point of this thing. And that's not really the way that I want it to be designed at all. You know, I want it to be a sanctuary for us, a place where where we can go and share things that are working for us, share things that are not working for us, share wins, share losses, ask questions that we think are stupid um, so that we can come to find that they are not stupid, but a place that is safe, you know, for us, a place where you can get good feedback, a place where you can blow off steam if you need to, you know, do whatever you want. And so... Um, the name itself actually hasn't changed anywhere yet. I literally just decided to do this yesterday on the, the, because the, um, the, the group that I'm a part of that had this, this mastermind meeting is called The Den, The Lion's Den, technically. But I really like that idea of a place that is, is like a gathering place, a place where people um, are safe. And so the sanctuary for me, I kind of like it. Um, it's a little goth, even though I'm totally not goth. I think it's fun. So... Um, that I don't even know how I got on that on that tangent, but um, this this meeting. Oh, the well, reason I was I, I guess I was going there is because I'm I'm having my own mastermind meeting um, in October, uh, first weekend of October. And if you think you might be interested in that, you can reach out to me. I'll just make you figure it out. Um, and there's still there's a couple of spots available for people if they really want to come, and it's gonna be cool. It's I'm gonna work some of this stuff in. And so if you're struggling and you want to have like real talk and you want to you know get down into the nitty-gritty then this might be a a good thing for you okay so just think about that think about where you're at and where you want to go and and if you're satisfied and and uh if you're not then then maybe you want to come hang out for a couple days because i will uh you know i will help you find your path basically and that's all it is all right that's me taking a drink you can probably hear it on the mic. Um, so what was cool, so all right, let me give you a little bit of background. And then what I thought I would do, I, I came up with five sort of lessons, five takeaways from this mastermind meeting that I wanted to share with you. But I kind of want to set the tone a little bit to give you an idea of, of, of the context. This is a group full of, there are business owners in the group and there are non-business owners in the group actually. This group is, is more about personal development with business and and with and um, uh, um, and including business 
than just like straight up business, which I also like because I think that, and if you listen to my podcast, hopefully if you're in the, if you're in the sanctuary, formerly the inner circle, then you know, like I talk a lot about, about this more woo woo stuff, about this more high level stuff, about, about getting your mind right and having, having your body right. And, and how, you know, it's sort of a, um, it's more than just business, you know, like this, your success is, is related more than just to the, the gross income that you've collected this year. And this group is sort of about that. It's run by a guy named Sean Whalen. So you can go check him out if you want. S-E-A-N-W-H-A-L-E-N. Uh, he, it, by a uh, warning, he, if you, if you've listened to like the MF CEO project and Andy Frisella, then you sort of, this is, he's kind of like that. Okay. So he's, he's a little in your face. Um, he's a little sweary and he doesn't rub everyone the right way and that's fine that's okay i'm just warning you so if you go check him out don't be offended if he says something okay i'm just i'm not responsible for him but he he came up with this concept called core four this is like sort of like his thing that he works through and i really like it it does a really great job of of i think encapsulating uh, what it takes to be successful in in the truest sense of the word which is sort of even inside of your own definition and core four stands to represents four principles principle number one these are in no particular order necessarily uh, it, it's passion right purpose productivity and power all right so passion is basically family what's your family life like um, are you taking care of your people right are you are you doing the things that you need to do from that perspective and getting the things that you that you need as well um, purpose is like mindset right what are you doing to cultivate your mind to continue to learn to create a strong will to to um, uh, cultivate discipline right these kinds of things that is purpose productivity is business right are you doing the things that you need to do in your business um, and then power is fitness essentially right so it's like mind body uh, family soul kind of and I would say purpose goes soul as well whatever that means to you whether it means anything or not because this is not like a Christian kind of a thing um, no offense to all you Christians out there but it's it's just not okay and um, so those four things basically are the are sort of the four core areas of your life and what this mastermind meeting was about was really sort of um, identifying where you are, identifying where you want to go, finding the maybe the weak spots in your core four where you're where you're not doing the things that you want to do or know you should be doing, and then kind of coming up with the plan to um, make those things better. Because if you if you haven't noticed, if you haven't thought about it, then you, maybe you haven't noticed. But there, those four areas of of life apply to everyone across the board. And your business could be doing great. It could be it be it be killing it. But if you're not if you're not happy at home, if you're not healthy, you know if you have poor discipline in, in areas of your life, then everything else is going to struggle. All of those other areas are going to struggle right along with that. So I think it's very important to cultivate um, uh, greatness in all four of those areas. And I can tell you, look, I am not winning at all those areas right now i think everybody always needs work somewhere and i am no different okay and there are things that i'm working on that are very important to me that are are very big in my life okay i'm not gonna tell you about it because you don't get to know but i i can tell you um with 100 percent certainty that having uh, problems in in any one of these areas is going to affect the other areas right if your business is doing bad, it's really, really hard to be um, present and and um, you know uh, giving at home. If you are not physically fit, if you are struggling with your with your weight, you know, or with sleep, or with drugs and alcohol, obviously those things are going to have detrimental effects on everything else that you do. You know, in your home life, on your on your on your mindset, the way that you see yourself, your self confidence, and on your business as well. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think you can see how that how that works. And so, what this um, what this meeting was about was identifying those areas in your in yourself 
and fixing them, okay? And coming up with a plan to fix them at least. And I can tell you one of the things that that made this a little bit different from past meetings that I've been a part of is two things. A, we were asked very tough questions, uh, but B, he did a really good job of sort of cultivating a safe place to talk about things that are hard. And then C, everybody, at least everybody at my table, was really great at, at participating, at sharing some of these hard things, at, at um, being open, and also not being judgy of everybody else's hard things, because everybody has hard things. If you think you're alone, if you think your life is harder than everyone else's, you're wrong. Okay? I hate to burst your bubble, but you're not special. Okay? Your, fee- your problems are just like everybody else's problems. Some people just know how to fix them or are willing to confront those problems, and other people hide from them or run from them and never deal with them. And they just they just exacerbate, you know, they just grow. So that was what was cool, I think, about this event and, and is all, something I'm trying to incorporate into my event is the ability to do some of these things because I think um, when you get past, when you're able to break down some of these barriers, some of these things that you know are in your way, the sky is the limit. Progress is inevitable. And that's what I want for all of you. Even if you don't come to, to, to hang out with me, if you don't join the sanctuary, if you don't do anything, but you take away something from this podcast episode, for example, I am, I've done my job and I feel great about it. So let's talk about these five things. The number one, um, oh, I just actually I already, went, I already got through number one. Number one is if you're struggling in one thing, it's going to affect everything, right? We talked about this already. You know, that anxiety, that stress, it can help but pour over into the other areas of your life in some way. Or, or at least into one or two of those other core four areas significantly. So don't lie to yourself that you can compartmentalize everything, that you can control everything, that you can take care of everything, and that one thing going terrible in your life is not going to affect everything else. Okay, Work to fix that thing. As hard as it may be, as hard as the conversations might have to be, be open, be honest, and ask for what you want. Or you're never going to get it. Okay. Um, which, by the way, that was a great one of the one, these little nuggets. I'm, I'm going to try to drop these little nuggets as they pop into my brain. So this is going to be very sort of sporadic, probably, but but um, but good. One of the um, one of the things that we talked about was asking good questions and asking questions that will actually elicit feedback. So, uh, for example, let's say you have just designed your website and you want to get some feedback on it. Don't send it to someone and say what do you think about this? Okay, because what are they going to say? They're going to say, it looks great, it's cool, I like blah, blah, blah. What you want to instead say is, how could this be improved, right? Is there anything that you don't like about this? Is there anything that turns you off or like you have questions about that doesn't make sense? That's the kind of question you want to ask because it's going to get the feedback that you actually want so you can make everything better, okay? Same thing in fitness. You know, um, why, why am I not losing weight, right? Why can't I get that six pack that I want? I don't know, whatever. Those are kind of questions you want to ask, you know, and you want to ask those of your trainer, right? Or some other professional so you can get some actual feedback. All right. Number two. Um, ah, so number two is you are going to be tested on how much you actually want the thing that you want. Okay. And I saw, I've experienced this in my own life. I, I, I know, you know, if you if you go and see and listen or hear or read Sean's story, he's experienced the same thing. Everybody in that room has experienced it. You're going you're going to experience it too if you haven't already. Here's why. As a business owner, as sort of this entrepreneur, as this person that sees bigger things and has the the drive and the craziness to go after it, you are wired differently than other people. The things that you are going to want out of your life and the way that you are going to get them are going to be different than other people uh, expect. And when you confront their expectations, even through your own behavior, even through telling people what you want that's outside of the norm, people are going to be hesitant and they are going to push back 
on you for that. And these may be your friends, it could be your, your, um, you know, your coworkers, it could be your family, it could be any of these people that are going to do this. And you are going to have to find out and think about and prove how much this thing actually means to you, how important your values are, how important you are. All right, I can tell you that I've had to have you know conversations with many different people about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it because it makes people nervous because they they it's not it's not normal and sometimes you know um, there there people are receiving feedback about you from the outside world and that can make them nervous so the 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 there are two things a know that that's going to happen and b you have to decide if you are going to be the type of person that um, is true to to yourself and your feelings and, and your your vision and what you want out of life, or if you're going to fall in line. And neither one is bad, by the way. They're both fine. But I want you to make sure that you are actually consciously making that choice. Right? It's this. It's this. The, you know, Neo from the Matrix, a red pill or the blue pill. What's it going to be? Once you take the red pill. Once you go down that rabbit hole of entrepreneurship and, and of, of um, you know, taking control of your life, of having no excuses and of, of blaming no one for what happens, it's hard to go back. It's really hard. So just know that you're going to be tested. Be ready. It's not going to always be easy. And um, you're just going to deal with that. Okay. All right. Number three, we are all lying to ourselves, and it's these lies that hold us back um, and, in parentheses, need to be dealt with head on. So I, a, lot of these a lot of these times, when, I, well, when I'm talking about lies, what I'm really talking about are excuses, are rationalizations, are rules that other people have put in place that are not actually rules, but are just things that other people like, right? For example, making content just like this as a lawyer if you do this every day people are going to talk to you about you you're gonna you're gonna feel bad sometimes you're gonna feel dumb sometimes it's not always gonna work out people are gonna leave you nasty comments sometimes it's gonna be lonely right so sometimes you're gonna so some people use those things right and they lie to themselves as reasons why they can't create content I don't know what to say. I, I look ugly on, on TV. I'm not sure how the tech works, right? These are all lies, okay? All lies that you're telling yourself so that you don't have to do the thing that's hard. You don't have to do the thing that's scary. So step one is identifying these areas where you're lying to yourself and then address them head on. That means, Extreme uncomfort, discomfort, often. It, uh, you know, this stuff is hard. But if you can come out the other side, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's peaceful. Okay, by the way, think about that for a minute. What if your life was peaceful? You know, it's not easy, but it's peaceful. You know what to expect. You're ready for any, any trials and tribulations that may come your way. You know where you're at and where you're going. You know who you are. We're going deep today, folks. I should have warned you beforehand. But these are the things that honestly that I'm thinking about a lot. I don't talk about a lot because um, there's there's just not the right context. But this mastermind group meeting was provided great context for this. Okay, number four. Oh, this is a pet peeve, peeve of mine. I, I hear it sometimes in, in, in my group, the Unconventional Attorney group on Facebook, and I heard I hear, heard it a lot this weekend, and I hear it a lot. Um, this this is can be often from people that are lot. These are the liars. Okay, what you'll often find is that the liars hide behind buzzwords, right? They don't say what they're going to do specifically. They use buzzwords. So, for example, what they might say is. Um, Instead of saying I'm going to record, uh, what, what's your takeaway from this from this uh, from this talk? Right? They might say, 
instead of I know I need to be making more videos and tomorrow I'm going to make my first video that's a pretty good ass takeaway instead they might say something like I know I've been lying to myself I need to hustle and get after it some more you know I need to see the real me they just start using the buzzwords and the things that those those big those big phrases that everyone's using they're hiding behind those if you find yourself and I think I hope you'll find that I don't do that a lot even on this podcast I just talk real talk I don't I don't get into these I don't rely on these buzzwords as descriptors for for my activity or what I'm doing and I don't I don't think you should do it either because it, it just gives you cover it's an easy way out if you told me that you were doing that I would say what does that mean if you told me I'm ready to hustle one of the things that that somebody stood I'll give you a perfect example somebody stood up and said you know what's your takeaway from this and somebody stood up and said you know I'm ready to be a bad mother effer right that's what they said in this next 12 months I'm gonna become a bad mother effer and the Sean asked a question which is a great question which is what does that mean like what does that look like who is that person what are they doing on a daily basis how often are they going to the gym are they e- what are they eating and are they eating right what kind of books are they reading you know what kind of what kind of videos what kind of what kind of things are they doing for their business or for the business that they're working in even if you're an employee by the way you can bring extra stuff to your business you know so don't buy, hide behind those buzzwords it's no bueno all right and then number five to execute a plan efficiently and effectively you must address the problem right in front of you okay to to execute a plan efficiently and effectively you must address the problem right in front of you over time you guys ask me how I get so much done this is how all right it's this old cliche of how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time you know it looks to you like I'm doing a lot of stuff really fast in fact what I'm doing is I'm identifying the problem that's right in front of me right now and I'm taking care of that and then when that problem is taken care of I tackle the next problem that's in front of that and I just keep going for example I'm, I am switching over to a new platform for email and for stuff like that within the building a law firm business and um, instead of having my goal as to to do that step one is to just create a landing page for the newsletter so that when you guys go sign up um, the emails go to the right place that's step one step two is to create that list once I've created the page right and what happens is you build up these little assets you know you build your house one brick at a time and you find what's right in front of you right now what's the biggest problem that you have right now in front of you and you fix that problem right now first forget about all the other problems don't think out into the future you know don't talk about hiring somebody if you can't pay yourself right now address the problem that's right in front of you I'll give you two perfect examples of this as well yeah, so at the at the at the meeting mastermind meeting we were in groups and we were just at the the groups were just the people that were sitting at the table with us and there were, there was a uh, uh, so, uh, uh, some people there that owned a CB, some CBD stores like the see like this the marijuana oil whatever they're, but their businesses are growing very very quickly okay very very fast and they were talking about what does their next year look like what do they need to do for their for their business and at first they were talking about and I think I think correctly about getting some help managing the growth of the business like when do we bring on an HR person do we need a bookkeeper like how do we make sure that our systems are running efficiently with training and 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 the day-to-day operation of the business because they're growing so fast that's that's probably what they need to focus on but they also had on their list to like expand their marketing into snapchat and instagram and things like that and it's like look the biggest problem in front of their face is not marketing they don't need more clients they're growing like crazy so fast while they don't want to ignore that they don't need it to vote to devote more resources to that what they're doing is working the problem that's right in front of them is the organization of the business right they're going crazy and and they're juggling tremendous uh, number of balls 
that are, they are afraid of dropping. So they need to figure out how to get that under control. That is the problem that's right in front of them. And then, so, so what I suggest was they go talk to a business coach, somebody that's grown you know, a brick and mortar product-based business very, very quickly. That way that person can tell them, that's, that would be step one, what's the problem right in front of you? And then that person can help them with step two. What's the next thing that they need to do, right? Another example is someone that wants to grow their business, but it takes them two days to fill out a proposal for work. And the goal was to do two to three proposals per week. That was just the end goal. Get there, two to three proposals a week. I'm like, hey man, that's gonna be really tough because if you just do no work and just write proposals at three proposals a week, you're working six days a week full time just on writing proposals. You're not selling them, you're not, you're not building them out, you're not doing any of these things. You know? So the biggest problem right in front of you right now is two day proposal creation time. How do we fix that? Is there any way to make it faster and more efficient? Right? Can somebody else do something? You know, how do you make that two days down to one day or down to half a day? Something like that. So what think about your business right now. Whatever identify your biggest problem. It's for a lot of you it's going to be getting clients, for example. Make a video. Make a, a gosh darn video. Right? For some of you, it might be other things. Take care of those things. For me, for example, it's not it's not marketing right now. I can have plenty of business coming in. It's it's um, it's it's the it's the execution behind it, right? I want to spend time doing this, thinking about bigger bigger picture things, working on bigger picture things, making the firm better overall. Not always reviewing wills all day, kind of a thing. So identify that thing right in front of you and, and fix that thing. Okay, all right. That's it. Those are the five lessons. This, this, by the way, if you made it this far, good for you. This is probably one of the best, better, this is probably one of the best episodes of the Unconventional Attorney Podcast I've ever had. Like this stuff is real talk. It's really important. And if you implement it, you will have huge impact on your business. Okay. And like I said, if you want to come Charleston, South Carolina, October 4th and 5th, hang out with me. That's cool. I'm not even going to give you the link. I'm going to make you track me down. But it's going to be fun. And we're going to be doing some, some things that are going to change your business. All right. But I will plug the newsletter because it's free. Everybody needs the newsletter. Theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter. Go get it. If you want more straight talk like this, go get it. The unconventionalattorney.com forward slash newsletter. A lot of you have also, uh, in the Facebook group, raised your hand and said, I'm interested in the book that's, that, you're, that you're making. Um, I can tell you if you don't know about that and you think you might want to read my book, that'd be another reason, a good reason to get on the newsletter because I'm probably going to try to come up with something good for, that, for them. So do that too. All right, that is it. I am Christopher Small. I am the unconventional attorney. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the effort that you're about to put into your business, the effort that you have been putting into your business. You can do it. It is possible. It is hard. It is exciting. It is scary. It is fun. You can do it. All right. That's it, everybody. Until next time, see ya.